This is by far the most in-depth video I've ever made start to finish of a whole headlight project. And I'm bringing it to you with a bunch of extra information at the end of the video. And we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Chris from flyride.com. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time on the channel and you wanna learn all about what parts to use, how to install them, and why all these parts are used in the first place, start now by subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss anything. All right, we're gonna be doing some Genesis Coupe headlights. This is the 2013 and up, and I have multiple different types of angel eyes. So, in the video you're gonna watch right now, I'm gonna take these headlights apart. We're gonna install some Diode Dynamics HD switchback angel eyes. They're super bright, they're crazy. This is called a projector shroud. It's what goes right around the projector. And so there's a couple pieces that are missing from this, such as the little gray hood. There's some little black clips that go on the side. But a cool thing about this is if you just strip it so that the chrome's off and it's black, now we're gonna have the black clips that go around it, the silver hood on top, and this going with the black little under tray. All these things are gonna look really, really cool. It's gonna change the whole look of this Genesis Coupe light, and we're not doing any paint. This is an older Genesis Coupe part, and this was painted, so it's not made out of black plastic like this one is. Different types of lights have different plastic that they're made from, so, if you're lucky, you can do what we're gonna do today on these, which is why I'm making a video to show you how to do it, because if you've got a Genesis Coupe, it's a pretty easy win. It makes it cheap, fast, you don't have to wait for paint to dry. I got a big bucket of gnarly chemicals that we're gonna dump this stuff in, so that's coming up, and then we will mount the ring to the face of it. Heat it for seven minutes total, and then I'm gonna rip into it. And it's at 220 degrees right now. So, in she goes. I need your help. I need you to tag Gorilla Grip Gloves <laughs> and hashtag some fly ride stuff on their, on their Instagram or whatever, because I got a few sets of these things, and it's the same type of gloves that I've always used except now there's a brand behind it and I like them and you can get them at Home Depot or whatever. So I have to put these things on because my alarm just went off to tell me to take hot lights out of the oven. So let's do that. Ooh, and I, I totally almost stabbed myself. Thank you, Gorilla Grip Glove. You just saved me a hole in that there thumb of mine. That would have been like, uh, in there, blood everywhere. Hardcore, so in the video I'm about to post up, on Instagram, you'll see that. Ugh. But the Gorilla Grip Gloves saved the day. And I was not bleeding as a result. All right. I have to put pressure. I'm gonna pull them close to my chest. I'm gonna try. And if I'm not buff enough, then they gotta go back in the oven. Looks like I ate my Wheaties today. So, yeah. It's a very weird pressure thing. Okay, here's what I've heard people say. They lift up these tabs, then they'll stick a card under it so that it can't go back down over and lock in place on that tab. So let's see if that, that works. I don't know, I just, I figure I should put these things in videos if people are telling me that they're cool little useful tricks that they do. Maybe I'll learn something. Yeah, it seems like that works a bit. I don't know. Sometimes like maybe that one will be tricky and so like instead of me having to worry about it, I could just slide the little card in there and while I'm using two hands on it at the same time. Man, I got a really dirty AAA card now. <laughs> when your camera homie falls over mid video, that is awesome. Come on, man. Go. I forgot there was wheels. There it is. Got him. Okay. So another thing too, the reason I'm doing all this stuff and I'm working slow, you wanna work fast. I'm working slow, I've done it a million times. I can kind of muscle my way through this one, at least at this point, the heavy lifting's done. It was just that first little push that I had to do to get over it. So now I've got a couple things I have to think about, making sure that I don't break the tabs as I tear this thing in half. And then the other thing is that I don't wanna to use tools. And a lot of people should use tools because 
they're only ever gonna do it once. It makes it way more difficult to just use your hands for everything. But my hands are not damaging anything. So I'm not prying on the plastic. I'm not messing things up a bunch. But I'm gonna do a weird little technique where I really, I do try to muscle it forward. And my idea is that I wanna take this lens and this black backing and I wanna slightly offset where the tabs are coming from the, the clear lens underneath this black. So I'm gonna push against the black and I'm gonna pull on the, on the clear. And in order to have the best amount of leverage, I wanna open it just about as much as I can because this projector shroud and everything else, it has to clear. It doesn't do a really easy job of sliding forward when you just try to open it straight up. So I like to kind of make as much of a gap as I can on the top. I don't know though, I kind of feel like the YouTube videos almost suffer when I do, I spare you from having to watch the reality of all of this stuff and I just time lapse everything. It's almost like YouTube's telling me that I'm, I'm not, I'm doing you a disservice by not showing you the full deal, so sorry. So see how that wants to give way right there? I normally use a metal thing to just get those tabs over, but that little guy got it done. All right, cool. So the other thing too about all this stuff is that as I'm taking my time, it's getting noticeably harder to do all the different steps. Don't make an install video while you're opening your lights. It makes it take longer. <laughs> and if it seems like it's too hard to pull on and things aren't coming where they feel like they're, you're not forcing them to, stick it back in the oven and heat it back up. I'm not going to right now because I know the only reason that it's taken forever is because I'm taking so long talking. Yeah, you just don't want to rush it. The reason that uh, it's easier when it's hot is just the glue's not fighting you nearly as much. So I want you to actually get to see it is possible even if you take too long. And then, <sighs> I'm out of breath. And then I like to use either a little flathead or your finger and just run along the edges as you're opening up lights. You know what, I haven't made a video with help before on this subject, so hopefully this is a good updated 2019 Genesis Coop video. So that's it. Now, something I've said in lots of other videos is that this, this clear lens inside, there's just no good way to clean it. So I'm gonna take some stuff out of here, but we have to protect this lens because if anything happens to it, you can't really clean it. So really quick, I'm just gonna take these internal parts out and then I'm gonna set the clear lens back on top of this so that it protects the projector and the chrome and all this stuff. You can't touch any of this stuff. You don't wanna get dust on it either. So I am gonna just yank that stuff out and then put the lens back on. And normally I actually have like a nice soft mat or something so I can set this thing down on. Right now I suppose I could do that with my Gorilla Grip glove. Not sponsored. Not yet. Not yet sponsored. Sponsor me, Gorilla people. All right. So here's the parts that we're gonna be taking apart and here goes the clear lens to temporarily, you don't want to shove this thing back on into place, but just set it there. Now we can put this somewhere else where it's not in the way, it's not gonna get messed with. Well, like always, the only reason I make these videos is to bring you some value. So if you got some value or you're getting value, because this is a long freaking video, delicately tap that like button for me. Let me know that you enjoy it and tell YouTube, because that's the only way they're gonna care that I keep making videos and tell you about them. You just gotta tell them. Just tell them and subscribe. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of information below in the description about the free course and all the stuff that you can learn from there. I hope this always helps and uh, yeah, let's keep going. Next little part of the science experiment is this degreaser. And my fingers are really freaking dry because I didn't protect my hands the other day. It will completely ruin your skin and it stings. I don't know, a lot of stuff I do is dangerous. So I'm giving you the heads up probably shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna do it and I think it's cool, but I have this bucket of degreaser right 
Bradshaw. Oh, that's heavy. What we're gonna do is drop the parts right into that. And what they're gonna do is quickly dissolve. So I've got a couple screws on the back side that I'm gonna take off right now. And then I'm just gonna dunk this thing straight in there. And we're gonna watch like magic as it basically completely dechromes itself. Watch and be amazed. I'm actually not gonna even take my hands off and I'm gonna try to explain as it's starting to, to do its thing, but you can see very light dissolving happening. So what this is, is it's vaporized aluminum. It's not chrome, it is metal, but it's kind of like a little piece, a really thin piece of metal is put into a chamber. It's given a certain amount of, I don't know if it's voltage or whatever, but it basically turns it into a mist. And in that mist, because of being in a, a big vacuum room, a big chamber, that mist is now floating in the air and then it's sucked on to the plastic part. So it's called vacuum metallizing. It's a really interesting process and check it out. You can actually see that mist is now dissolving right off of the part. And if you notice, it's already starting to show the color from the back. And so that milky little like marbleizing that you're seeing on the, the surface here, it's all just that aluminum breaking back down into those tiny little particles that used to be airborne before they were sucked to this part. So I'm literally only talking right now so that you can see in real time that this is actually happening fast. Some parts this does not work well on and there's things like clear coats and all of that. But as I've been talking, it's just doing its magic. And yeah, I want to see. And Jonathan's fingers that are touching the bucket are gonna start stinging in a second. He doesn't even know. <laughs> All right, so we're getting there. And so in just a minute, this thing's gonna be 100% stripped of its chrome, and then we're gonna mount the angel eye to it. And it's gonna look so different than it would have if we'd have tried to keep it chrome and we didn't have to paint it. So where I think a really cool thing that you could do is you could take those black, uh, the black parts that I, I removed off of it, and you could paint those now. So instead of just setting them to the side, they already are black. Maybe paint those the color of your car or just like a cool little accent color, match your brake calipers, something like that, I don't know. And then when you snap those things back into place, you're gonna have this little two-tone thing because those ridges that were shining through chrome before are now gonna be black. In this case, we're just gonna keep it straight, straight black and uh, no other color added into it. But you can see it's stripping it really, really well. So I'm super tired of talking. You should believe me, right? You believe me. It's just going to strip the rest of the way. <laughs> I'm done holding that thing. These guys right here are the same deal. They're just a black plastic. So I'm going to tie a little wire around this and then just drop it in the tank and let it start dissolving too. When I lift this thing off, if I'm not careful, the clear lens will come with it. If you're going to do this, which I also don't necessarily suggest everybody go do, but everyone wants to ask about it for sure. What chemical did you use? What chemical did you use? I use ZEP, Purple Industrial Hardcore whatever degreaser. It's just gonna be floating. There she goes. I was very happy right now. I should have my gloves on. And of course I don't. But look, that came out fast. Remember the other day I was lifting that thing out and it just totally wasn't coming? Well, I just dropped that thing in there and it's looking good. So we're basically good to go. I was thinking I was gonna have to let these things soak for longer, but I mean, I feel like an old fisherman right now. Next step. These have little tiny tabs around the light. What I like to use is pre-tinned wire, meaning this is wire that already more or less has like solder to it. So when I go to solder anything to this, it's going to stick super, super easy. And I can check as I go too. So like right now, I'm having a hard time seeing the bottom space. And so if I line that up with my marks, back at the bottom. 
So if I didn't have an indentation right there and I was doing this and spinning, the chances of it slipping are way, way higher. decent job. Now I want to make sure that my wire cut is perfectly in line with that. So yeah, I mean we're, we're through that step done. I'm going to cut my little hanger. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to cut these into small little hangers and then I'm going to bend a hook at the end of them. I think now after having done so many different headlights over the years, minimalist is so good. You could paint your car any color right now and these things would look dope. This is it. All right, so this is the Diode Dynamics Angel Eyes when they're off. Now we got them on in their full brightness. There's two other modes that they can be in. We've got one of them that we hook up a wire to the low beam and then it's automatically gonna dim the output as soon as the low beam turns on. This is because at nighttime, you're not gonna wanna have crazy full brightness and have it just be blasting everybody in the eyes if you have the option to dim it down, and we do, so we're gonna do that and it's all gonna be plug and play inside. Last is our turn signal feature. So this switchback turn signal, is so crazy bright we don't even need the original bulbs but we got them and it's just gonna make sense to have a really nice switchback look on the inside corner and the outside corner and again we did the black internals here so behind that pretty clear lens we've got really nice chic black it looks very much as though this is the way that these lights were designed to be and we didn't even paint anything everything was very much just strip the chrome off of it and they look dope I hope you agree to make this easy I'm gonna take these screws out so we went down behind the projector out the front and now I'm gonna use these little pliers to grab those wires and pull them out the front here We've got our red wire going to the red wire here, black wire to black wire, that takes care of our bright white angel eyes. We've got the brown wire, that's the turn signal on the car, going to the yellow wire. Very intuitive, makes sense, it's kind of what you would think it does. And then the last wire that we're left with is this white one. So for the white wire, I'm just going to roll straight down out of the housing for now. Later on, I can attach it to this low beam wire, and then we're all good to go there. So you've got your regular brightness. And then when we go switchback mode, they're blinking together. We're gonna to use the butyl from Diode Dynamics, and this is gonna be the same exact stuff that comes out of that machine, except it's already in a roll. It's kind of like a flat ribbon shape. So what I'm gonna do is lay it all the way down around the whole light, and then from there, we'll heat it up in the oven and make sure that it's really pushed down into place how it needs to be, and then seal the light. A year and a half ago, I got the idea that I needed to invest in myself and my future and do my online courses. To do that, it was thousands of dollars up front, and since then I've spent more than thousands of dollars, and then more than thousands of dollars on equipment and all that stuff to just pump into this thing that I want to be my future, and I want it to help you in your future. So the whole point is the online courses, lightingcourse.com, as well as all the little sub 
little, I don't know, chapters of the main academy. These are all things that I care a lot about. And so this is the very first video. This was an hour and a half of content. It was so much and I just packed it down into a little nutshell to make it at least consumable for YouTube. I've probably lost like 80 plus percent of the audience by this point right now. So if you're still here, comment below, I'm still here because that actually shows that you actually, you really care, you wanna learn and you wanna, I don't know, better yourself by the knowledge that you get from watching this channel, which is why I do it and it's why it's free. I'm not trying to pitch everybody on, oh, come give me money, blah, 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 because I give you free stuff anyway. But this course, I'm pumped because a little while ago this year, I started a program called Five Months to Five Figures. And I felt guilty, I felt bad inside because I hadn't finished it. I hadn't put everything together with the cherry on top and this video was that. So I just pumped in so much. Like I said, over an hour and a half of content in there, all broken down, consumable, so you can do it on your phone and it just walks you through all of it. Bigger stuff than I can put on YouTube. I even got a comment on the last video where somebody said, hey, maybe you should do like a, like a paywall, something like that so that you can put the long form content. I've already got that, it's just taken forever to do it. And now I get to really blow up my academy as well. We got a new member this week. I'm really actually stoked. I feel like it's actually real now. It's actually coming true. So, you listened to me rant, you've already watched 25 plus minutes of content, but I want you to know this, is that all the stuff that I do moving forward is gonna be about training people on the online courses. I've got the new free one about opening and closing. In this video, even added to that, how to open Genesis Coupe Lights, how to seal Genesis Coupe Lights. It's stuff that I'm pumped about. So thank you guys for watching, for hanging through all the way this long, just to hear me tell you about my hopes and dreams and teach you a bunch of weird stuff and talk about the Zep. Let me show you the Zep. Bam! Now I got something to put at the beginning of the video because I keep forgetting to do that. That is your Zep right there. Guys, I'm gonna see you in the next one and it's not gonna be long. It's just gonna be like a typical, I'm gonna shoot, bang it out, vlog style. It's gonna be dope, so I'll see you there. Adios.